part of me says, I don't take most of my privileges for granted. But at the same time, there have been several times today when I've caught myself and thought, you know what, if somebody gave me a choice of being black or white, I would definitely pick white. And you can hear, you can hear some of the, tensity, the tenseness in people's voices as they speak because they're afraid somebody's going to judge them or whatever. But as the day went on, more and more people talked and more and more people got involved because there wasn't that fear, there wasn't that um, like, oh my gosh, somebody's going to judge me. Everybody knew that they were here for the same, the, the same reason and that was to find answers to all of this. I know that the folk in the room who are white and the ones out there, I know you never owned any slaves. I know you never owned a business under Jim Crow that discriminated against anybody. I know you never did anything to anybody, so we don't even have to go there and talk about that at all. Nothing to feel guilty about unless you did something. But there's a difference between guilt and responsibility. You can take responsibility for the things you haven't done simply because doing so is a pretty smart and functional and right thing to do. And one of the ways that I think we can do it, and many of us in the room who have done work on this subject have discussed it, but I would suggest we haven't discussed it enough. We haven't made this enough of the focus of our work, is this issue of why, in fact, whites, the vast majority of us, are in fact harmed in the long run, even as we receive privilege even as we receive the relative advantages of a system set up by us for us, how we are still harmed, how we are still damaged by it. And that isn't about bashing white people, that's about saving white people. See, people from the beginning of when I started doing this work said, why do you want to save black and brown folks so much? I said, man, I don't do this to save black and brown people. People of color will save themselves from white supremacy, they always have. But the people who won't save themselves from white supremacy because they don't see why they need to are the very folk who benefit from white supremacy. And I'm doing that work for my people. I'm doing that work for my family, for my community. People of color will figure it out. White privilege is not masculine prerogatives. White privilege is not class snobbery. Privilege that is ascribed to people by the dogma of the Judeo-Christian our philosophies is not the same as white privilege. The presumption of Anglo hegemony, that is that the world is all like the Anglo perspective of it, is similar to and has very similar consequences of white privilege, but it is not the same as white privilege. White privilege is a set of options, opportunities, and opinions, a set of options, opportunities, and opinions that are gained at the expense of non-white people. It is a very specific set of options that one is able to exercise, opportunities that one is able to have, and opinions that one is able to possess and impose that are systematically gained and maintained at the expense of people who are not white. Not because they're not female, not because they're not heterosexual, not because they're not Jewish, not because they're not Catholic, not because they're not a lot of other things, simply because they are not white. And these options, opportunities, and opinions are a direct consequence of the biological accident of color. So I want to talk first about the first responsibility of white people in anti-racism, and that is to work with other white people, to talk to other white people about racism and about privilege. And it's in this way that we can use our white skin privilege to the benefit of anti-racism. We can use our privileged access with other white people and talk to them about issues of race. That any time a white person can choose to go back into their white-skinned world where privilege is invisible and racism is not about them. I can make that choice at any point, and it's a much more comfortable place to be. I can go back there at any point. It's a choice that I make every day and that you will make every day or do make every day. That's the ultimate white privilege. We need a whole new wave of leadership among young brothers and sisters of all colors. 
And it has to be a leadership that accents what it means to be human and what it means to be democratic, mediated with an unprotracted commitment against white supremacy. We need white brothers and sisters to say, I don't ask black folk for permission to struggle against white supremacy. I do it because it's right and moral and just. And even if sometimes they don't want to work with me, that's all right because I'm not here to win a popularity contest. I'm here for moral witness, political witness. It's the right thing to do, and it's best for American democracy in the world. That's the kind of courage necessary. In a democracy, we're all on the same ship. And that ship has a huge leak in it. In the end, we go up together, or we go down together. None of us are in this life alone. As humans, we are social animals. We have to have other people in order for us to maintain our humanity. So what we do then, we have distorted that in the educational process. And I would say that if we, we reshape this so that we truly build communities among children, not only will we help children of color, but we'll help white kids as well. You know, because part of the problem with building that community is to learn that our destinies genuinely are connected with each other. You know, if we don't work together, we're going to kill ourselves. I'm not only an activist for Asian Americans, I'm trying to make America a better place. So it's a really good opportunity for me to meet other folks in the state and actually around the country. This conference is so big that there are people from both coasts here uh, to talk about the work that we do and talk about the work that they do, just connect. I had all of my preconceived ideas and some of them were right, but a lot of them were wrong. So just being open and to being ready, to, ready for change. I think a lot of people, including myself, um, started to think of things a little differently. What I feel like I've, I've gained from this experience is courage and, and I feel like I can be a better ally now to other people and maybe not be so afraid of who I am. It's been really wonderful to see that, that there are other white people working on racism since I already kind of know African Americans and Latinos are working on it. Um, it's nice to know that there are people who see what I see.